fandom. Every once in a while, you, you like a concept so much that you wish there were a game about it. And, and it ha doesn't really occur to people who don't play role-playing games that they can actually create their own without having to go out and, and um, you know, buy their own game company, get a bunch of people hired together to get everything made. Tabletop role players have a different means. Paper. Pencil. Hey, what I want to do? Write down the concept, make some rules, try not to make it too complicated, and play it with people. It's a tr tradition as proud as people sitting in their basement killing time with, with stuff other people would say is a total waste. The fandom that caused me to jump into that realm was DBZ, better known as Dragon Ball Z. I, I'll be honest, I got through the Namek Saga, I saw him go Super Saiyan, I watched everything from Raditz appearing to that, and I went, that's a great story arc, a little long in the middle, but you know, it it actually felt like it was a good conclusion. The series can end there. Didn't. But you know what? I really do appreciate the drama they're trying to throw into it. But I I, I was a, oh, an okay fan of them. When I was a teenager and this thing called the internet first came to our house, I, I joined a forum called Final Dragon Ball Z. And in there, there was a forum where you could write out your own stories. This is where I first learned, actually, that I could write in a continuous way that was entertaining and won awards on the site for the best role-playing. Coincidentally, there's someone who may watch this who is still bitter about the fact that I kept getting best role-player and he was just uh, edged out almost every single time. And, and he actually is someone I wrote this game with later on. He and I, um, we created we created a dice system for a different game he was developing. I may talk about it at some point in the future, but we had this, we called it the, the Fate System. So I used that as inspiration when I created the fandom game Dragon Ball Z The Die of Fate. So cheesy, it sounds perfect. And that's exactly what it was. We went in saying, how can we make this fun for everyone? How can we make this true to the show, and at the same time, not overburdened with rules? So it used a percentile die, and all you had to do in order to really succeed is roll below 10%. That was going to be your critical range. And as your skill increased, your percentage actually uh, widened for getting any kind of success. So you didn't necessarily have to get underneath 10% to succeed at all. That's always your critical range. Very, very important thing. When you get uh, within that, let's say you have a 40% chance to attack someone with your fist. Well, if you roll below 40%, you hit them. You roll beneath the 10%, you hit them critically. And at any time, you can choose after an attack or an action or anything, to roll a d20, your die of fate. A 2 through a 19 does nothing. So 90% of the time, it's a, it's a roll that has no benefit. Sometimes you roll a 20. That adds another critical. And yes, you can choose to what they call explode the die. So you could roll again and keep going for that 20. So that would stack a critical on critical on critical onto your punch. So suddenly you have this one punch. You're like, yeah, I'm level one, but I thought I'm going to give this a try. You go to punch someone, you roll a 1%, and you roll three 20s in a row. That punch is multiplied by two four times. Now, that may sound, oh, so it's times eight. No, 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 sir. No, 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 no. That's not how math works on this. Two times two times two times two. That is a big number, and that's the escalation we wanted. It was going to be that ridiculous, and, and that was great. The counterbalance. Let's say you've done that rolling your d20, you roll a 20, you roll a 20, fantastic. You decide to explode and roll again. You roll a 1. Turns out you totally failed your action. The 1 is ultimately powerful in the die of fate system. High risk. I reward though, because especially during beam battles, beam battles, criticals actually stack to your advantage. 
which means, ah, I'm lasting over here, ah, I'm lasting over here, and then I got like four criticals, which means I advance stage, stage, stage. <laughs> Because sometimes that just happens in DBZ. It does! And and you're like, that sounds like utter chaos. You want to hear something even more chaotic about it? There was no DM. No storyteller. The game was designed as each group had to agree. You had several people who were involved in the group. I think the one we, uh, we did down in Florida where we first made this, we had uh, three consistent, four sometimes, but everyone basically took turns, even during uh, campaigns where we had a story that was told. We we really excelled at, okay, there's a so basically a saga that was happening. Who wants to make the bad guy for the saga? You made the bad guy, then you get to control him, but you're not going to be the sole one that can control him either. Like... This match, you're controlling the bad guy. It's fun. There's some uh, certain advantages and disadvantages to controlling them. But the next time, it's like, all right, someone else gets to control. So you can, everyone has a chance to shape the personality of the big threat. And it becomes more everyone's. And that's something I really wish that more games could do. That's why I put it into the system, because it was... It was really a great shared experience, a, a certain trust. There was no wall between the DM and the rest of the players. Yes, it was chaos, but at the same time, it was Dragon Ball Z. I mean, I feel like even though the system proved pretty broken and in need of dire repair once we got to the skill level 3, up until that point, I felt like I was playing in the show. And... And we had so much fun doing it. Even when I brought it back up to, um, when I moved back to South Dakota and I introduced it to a whole new group of friends. Fun story, the second time Bacchus ever appeared was in that game. And that game was the creation of Kelvin DeJetti. If it weren't for Dragon Ball Z, the Die of Fate, Kelvin and Bacchus would not be the dynamic duo you've seen so many times on this channel. And love. Love. And love. Yes. So, there's a little bit of trivia for you. And, and it was just great fun. I really wish I could get that up and running in some form again. I just need to find the rules, dust them off, maybe simplify it. I mean, honestly, subtracting percentages is not the easiest, especially if everyone at the table has so many different columns to look through for special abilities. But... It was a fun concept, and best off, we never planned to sell it for money. It was a totally fan game. If we could tweak it to a way that it would be more accessible and more reliable, would it be as fun? So, that's something if uh, people are showing interest in. I may go and get a copy of the rules, try to get it compiled into a PDF, and just, you know, share a link. I really, I really, if people are interested in seeing the results of it, and... We have specific character stories. Oh my god. So if you want to hear more about the craziness that went on, feel free to comment saying, hey, we want to hear more about this. If this never gets mentioned again, this will be the only time you hear of it. But remember, if you have a passion, chase it. If you have a vision of something that would be a cool game, and you're just like, oh, well, I wish that existed, but I guess it doesn't, so nothing coming of it, make that game. Put a little effort into it. Make even just a concept for it. Pitch it to a friend and see, wow, if it's a great reaction, maybe we should do something about that. The world is your oyster. Go ahead and take a big bite out of that disgusting snot in a rock. Because, damn it, it's your oyster. <sighs> oh, God, I didn't think of a sign-off, too. I didn't, I didn't think it's true at all. Um... Piccolo is absolutely the best, and I don't know why he didn't get more respect in Dragon Ball Z. Um, hand me the mug. Wow. It's strangely not clean, but you were just drinking out of it, so I suppose that makes sense. So, seriously though, why did people just ignore Piccolo? He was like, okay, I've made this argument before, and I made it on my other channel on another video, but oh my god, Piccolo is the strongest non-script created, non-Saiyan in the entire 
in the entire um, scope of that show and even the whole canon of the series. Because everyone else is like, oh, boo, he's existed for a long time, and he's the most powerful thing ever. We're saying it's all they always get the most power. It's like, you know what? Piccolo earns everything. He trains like damn mad. And he still looked at like, oh, but it's just Piccolo. Anyone can beat him. It's like, no, 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 no. This guy is the biggest badass, and if it weren't for the discrimination of him not being white, he would totally. Ah. Also a better father than Goku. Yes, very much so. I'm telling you. Green lives matter. All right.